I look at it daily. I, I, I want people to have a daily experience of a little bit of everything. So I've done, I've spoke at conferences about this and I've talked to young trainers, don't kill us, don't kill us. We want our health. We want, we want functional health, not performance health. And I, and I, and I try and uh, talk about the difference between the two. Uh, welcome, everyone, and welcome, Mike Waters. Uh, our guest today is Mike Waters. Um, Mike's had the honor of being the original fitness director of Timber Hill Athletic Club in Corvallis, uh, Oregon, when it opened in, get ready for this, 1980. That's Seems 1980, like 40 years ago. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> uh, his training is in uh, adult exercise science, uh, and his heart's really in the chronic disease prevention. Uh, Mike, Mike's brought a fitness medicine philosophy, or fitness is medicine philosophy to his program design wherever he's been for the last 40 years. Uh, he's also managed the Corvallis Hewlett Packard Worksite Health Program for 14 award-winning years. Uh, his expertise today is in motivational strategies for adults interested in being healthy, but having a hard time getting going. That's all of us, I think. <laughs> he is a fitness over 50s team uh, director of health promotion. Uh, he takes a holistic approach with each individual he works with, helps people transition into the next stage of their life th into a healthy lifestyle. Uh, Mike's available for personal health needs, starting with a complimentary health life review. Welcome, Mike Waters. We have... Uh, We've been trying to do this for a while, and between technology and, and, and life and everything else, uh, I'm, I'm glad to say we got to this day, but it wasn't, the, uh, it wasn't yeah. flip a switch and go, was it? No, no, no. it's a process. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Being healthy, it's a process. Most things worthwhile are, are, are worth waiting for. So, yep. Yep. so, so <clears throat> I, I think a good question I always like to, to ask uh, people from different uh, areas of expertise is tell tell us what your view of, of health is like so what is a healthy person um as you and i have talked about and commented on linkedin posts about it's more of a holistic um uh, approach it's uh it's the old uh greeks philosophy of mind body and spirit um it's you know you using your brain, um, learning, um, engaging with people, um, which I know for everybody is not always normal, um, and of course being physical, and being physical, and then you and then you branch into the the more detailed aspects of a holistic health is eating better, you know, what we call the core concepts of health, you know, stress management, eating better, no smoking, moderate alcohol use, those, those type of things. But um, just in a um, holistic approach daily, I look at it daily. I, I, I want people to have a daily experience of a little bit of everything. So my, like my family right now, uh, even with grandkids, you know, so everybody's cooped up. Okay. Um, are the kids doing art? Are they being creative? Um, are they getting PE? Are they, are they using their minds as well as their bodies? And then both the, you know, the learning from a logical linear approach to being creative, doing art, you know, making things up. Um, I want that for everybody and uh, from youth to older adults. I want, I want that kind of philosophy. Um, I'm not big, my family knows this, I'm not big on holidays and birthdays. So I tell people, I want, I want through holistic health, I want every day to be your birthday. 
say I want I want a slice of wellness every day. I don't want it to just be we're gonna we're gonna put life on hold, which means our health until the right time comes up. See, and that's what people tend to do. So uh, so that's kind of my philosophy is is overall holistic type health. Yeah, that's why I like that's why I like your five pillars of health in your program. Right, and it because it's it's we speak to the same thing around. It's all about balance. Yeah, yeah. So, so the birthday is a good example. Doing it right one day out of the year doesn't really add up to much success, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 put emotional energy. Um, I I think when somebody's unbalanced, um, and it it impacts our biology as well as our emotional state. When we put too much energy into, well, I'm going to wait till the time's right, or I'm going to wait, I can't wait for this holiday, or I can't wait for this. Um, it's, we have to enjoy it daily. We have to enjoy, you know, as many aspects as we can daily. And uh, in my experience, this really came out in my experience in our years at HP. For the first time in my career, I saw people who made a lot of money who were very sharp, but were very unhappy because they weren't, they, they had a hard time creating this kind of life. And the, and the, um, the intelligent people I knew that had a more uh, satisfying life, they did hobbies, they did art, they were physical, they, they had this balance and it really helped me to see um, from a general population perspective, it is possible. And, um, and their biology was better. See, and that's, that's the whole thing that's interesting too. Their biology was better. And it wasn't just exercising all the time and eating hot bowls of steam. I always get a laugh. <laughs> you know, eating hot, hot all the steam for health, but it was more, it was more that balance, you know, that balance type of probe. So. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> so y- you focus on older adults um, and, and exercise means different things to different people. Um, but you probably also have a, a much better insights into exercise for different phases of our life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, fascinating. Um, absolutely fascinating. Yeah. It's- so, so maybe l- l- let's kind of t- talk in a couple of areas. Um, there's those who have known exercise their whole life who probably are showing up. And then on the other spectrum, those who have never exercised who show up and say, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe yeah. talk about those two, because that, that, that'll kind of capture most of us are in one or the other, or at least we identify with one. one yeah. Or so it is, it, it's interesting. So um, at, at Fitness Over 50, it's, 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 it's not the end of the road to get these stories from people, but it's a great place to hear everybody's history. So when I talk about Health Life Review, uh, this is something that I do. I have my interns do is I kind of in it through a story um, get people to talk about their history with physical activity. Well, for the men, okay, and I'm talking about not, not so, you know, maybe first generation boomers. Uh, we have some olders. We still have some um, great generation people that come that, that have embraced health and, and, and genetics are, are good playing there too. But um, for men, see, they grew up playing sports um, and they had organized team sports. The fascinating stories are the women that, that were, there was no PE, there was no girl sports, and it's really interesting. We have a number of um, women. We have a lot of retired uh, Oregon State uh, people that come to fitness over 50. Okay. And a lot of these gals, they go to, um, they go to the OSU women's basketball games. Okay. And they really like, you know, they really like it because they, they look at that and they go, you know, that could have been me. 
that could have been me. And I'll ask them, or my interns will ask them, well, what do you mean by that? Well, I played basketball with my brothers and, and they tried to kick me out. And just these fascinating stories of the early, what I call the early pioneers, women, embracing physical activity, enjoying it. And they, they've done it through the lifespan. They've been through the running boom. They've been through jazzercise. They've been through all these fitness trends. And here they are still doing it today. It's just, it's just fantastic to see. It's just, yeah, great stuff. Yeah, so, so there is that evolution of things that happens, right, for, for all sorts of reasons that uh, because you did something once doesn't mean that is your only sport or activity for the rest of your right. life. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's... Um, I also, I, I'm dealing with um, the male athletes, uh, endurance like runners, a lot of runners in my circles um, that are going through the um, grieving period, if you will, because they can't perform. See, now we're not, we're, we're, we're not talking about exercise for health, we're t talking about exercise for performance. So they can't run marathons. They can't do those things they were able to do because there's been changes in their biology. And, and they'll, in emails and conversations, they'll share this with me. And, or I'll see pictures of them. Maybe it's, we did a marathon together back in the early 80s or something like that. Well, now it's, they're at a different place. Some people, as you know, handle the, the transition, the life's transition easier than others. So the physical aspect in gerontology, I call this the new gerontology, um, even though Jung uh, and um, the, other, the other gerontologists, I can't think of them right now, talked about transitioning from the physical aspect of self into maturing into other uh, aspects of being a leader, a mentor, that, that type of thing. So it showed up then, but this, this is a new area of, of, in gerontology, the physical aspect of exercising, running, running, biking, you know, doing all these things. The new chapters are being written right now. Yeah, it, it, is, a, it is a different time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and and it's it's interesting it's interesting to see it's really fun to um at fitness over 50 we have um some retired Oregon state coaches uh i make it a point to spend time to listen to them you know <laughs> complain about um it might be basketball football you know it's like well in our time we didn't do it like this you know it's really fun but i want i want those people to you know to be able to tell their stories and and that these were fine coaches and and it, it's just it's just fun it's a, it's all part it's all part of their life and my life so yeah great it uh, it sounds like a great atmosphere there it is it's fantastic the uh, the one thing i wanted to ask you about too was it, the the club is is fitness over 50 mm -hmm. um which oddly enough i think a lot of us in this area recognize 50 is a fairly pivotal age typically what i see is at age 50 is kind of where you make the decision point you're either going to step your game up um if you've kind of you know that through your 40s and things, things got slid with, you know, the kids and, and career and things. Right, that's right. Uh, that's right. But you've kind of seen parents go through some things, you know, any number of reasons that stimulate it. Um, and you're still, you're still early enough on that you can make some tangible change. You can still do marathons and, or you can start to do marathons in your 50s, for example. Um, the later it, it goes, there's still lots you can do, of course. But it's um, you're, you're not going to get back to to uh, to where you might like to think, or or the the road back is is a lot tougher. Um, so, are you do you see kind of fifty as uh, I guess psychologically as an important uh, benchmark? I, I recognize the club may have other reasons for it in terms of from a the atmosphere of people there, right, but, right. but psychologically with people you work with. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because in some of my talks I talk about if you look at the um, the template 
that physicians use both male and female okay at every decade uh in a physical exam they're looking for certain things okay uh, now we know 20s 30s, eh, there's not too much, you know, that, that, that population, that, that they don't go in for checkups. But 50s, uh, for men particularly, and, and I'll, I should say for women too, that's when things get kind of a little murky, because by that time we've lived long enough where the diseases, um, you know, they've accrued. See, they built up. So the bad food, uh, if there's been tobacco use, if, uh, if, if even cancers had a chance to work its way in, that's where it shows up in the 50s. And so I, I totally agree with you. That's kind of a, a, a choice point of, you know, someone um, uh, maybe goes to the doctor um, and they get a checkup and it's like, well, Scott, you know, we, you, you're, you're, lipid profile is off i'm going to recommend that we do a um you know we do an ekg we start looking for this stuff well that's you know for some people that starts to get their attention okay uh the biggest one i see and have seen for the last 10 15 years in this community as well as it is nationally is type 2 diabetes so i have a story i have a story around this okay so it's, it's uh, 1993, we're at HP, okay? And we put on a, uh, it was the first health fair. See, we got there in 92, did a few things, did talks, one-on-ones. Um, we got allowed to do a health fair. Now in worksite health promotion, health fairs are a normal thing that you do as a health promotion program person. Okay. The 90s, the late 80s and early 90s were also another in the nutrition area were a, were a transition where um, we were doing a lot of uh, cholesterol testing in communities, uh, malls. Uh, I worked for the YMCA then. Uh, I was in Texas. I mean, we, you know, we, we did a, a lot of this stuff. So we scared the hell out of everybody in eating meat and dairy products, you can recall this time, because of the cholesterol. Well, the food industry <clears throat> took advantage of that and started putting out fat-free cookies, crackers. And then the wonder food came up. The, it'll be the wonder food of the 90s, bagels, okay? So HP sold a lot of bagels. In fact, the local business that uh, had the contract were able to open two more stores in other towns here in Oregon because of the money they made off the HP contract. Okay, so hopefully that sets up my story. So we're putting on this fair and the guy that owned the bagel shop gets a hold of me and he says, hey, I'd like to work your food fair. I said, it's not a food fair, it's a health fair, but come on in. So I'm picturing, I still have that picture in my mind. They had huge tubs of all kinds of flavored bagels, you know, cinnamon raisin, plain, onion, the whole thing. P employees were coming in and just grabbing them like crazy. So I'm watching everything. We had over 4,000 employees come through that day to do the health fair, okay? And so my program manager, she was an occupational health nurse uh, for HP. She comes in, she goes, Mike, this is fantastic. This is really going over well. And I had this, I think I had this dour look on my face. And she goes, what's the matter? And I said, Connie, today I've contributed more to type two diabetes in this community than I will the rest of my career. So I, I, use, I tell groups today, so that's what's happened. And so, and so I'm gonna say, you know, when we hit that point in 50s, okay, uh, glucose is out of whack, A1C is out of whack, 
And now we have, you know, 50 is young now. You know, people, somebody's 55 to me, they're young. And already they're, they're taking, they're going to a type two diabetes class. See, so it's not, it's not just somebody that's older, you know, in their, in their 70s or 80s, it's somebody in their 50s. So that's the biggest one I've seen. So you're, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. And I think it, it, all of us who work in this industry, we see the early onset of age related diseases all the things we thought just happened to old people. And it's not suddenly that a 55 year old today is any different than they were 25 years ago, um, materially, except that they're likely far more down the disease path than, than they would have been 25 years ago on right. average. Right. right. So, um, for for yeah. probably any number of reasons. Yeah. 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 So we have, um, you know, it's interesting. So when I first met, um, I actually have known the owner of Fitness Over 50, Jason Wallace. I've known him for years. I've actually presented for him at, at other times. And I always asked him, um, why, you know, I think it should be uh, Fitness Over 60. 50 is too young. But um, because of what we just talked about here with the with the the health issues and because we have a lot of um we still have osu employees that come in you know they come in before after work uh teachers in the area so we still have a what i call this younger population come in and they're comfortable there and that may be a whole nother topic we want to hit on is being comfortable at where I exercise and fitting in, you know, because I may carry more weight, you know, things like that. That's a big part of it too. So I've shifted my thinking to, yeah, we need to continue, um, you know, letting this age population come in. Yeah. And so that maybe feeds into, uh, I thought another good area to talk about is um, the things that we're doing well in terms of, um, you know, we look at, at North Americans, um, there's clearly some things, it's easy to find the things that we're not doing well at, and we can talk about those. But of the things like clubs like yours, um, to, me, uh, to me are certainly exceptional in terms of there are very few around the country that I'm aware of, but, but really provide an excellent opportunity and, and, and a great business opportunity. And we're, I think it's, uh, it's probably typical, you know, probably, um, uh, some some vision there was happening. We're, we're still struggling on the marketing side for entrepreneurs and corporations to figure how to how to market to the over fifty and over sixty crowd. Um, we still seem to, you know, we, we see it all the time of how they get it wrong. And right. They, exactly. They, yeah. 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 They they can't seem to figure it out. But um, but clearly some things we're doing right. So one of them was from an exercise standpoint. Um, What's what's important where you see success in terms of from that in the environmental aspects or, you know, wh where you see people naturally are going to be more successful because of some uh, other surroundings or activities that we're starting to see some shifts, perhaps. Well, I'd like to see the um, from. Well, one thing that, that's that's troubling because I come from an academic model. One thing that's that's troubling is um, is now the 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 number of de degreed people in adult fitness kinesiology um, are are dropping, um, and there are more and more clubs, gyms nationally that are hiring people that are certified, you know, and they don't come from a, a degree background. Okay. And that might be okay, but it's just where I come from. It's where, where I come from. Um, so with that, what I'd like to see is with American College of Sports Medicine, which a long time ago, I used to have some certifications in, and uh, American Council on Exercise, all of these uh, accre very accredited, well, done certifications. I'd like to see more um, training and, and, and usually, now, now here's what's interesting. Who does the teaching? Who, who, who are the trainers? It's young people. 
okay? So I'd like to see more in their certification, their training, more understanding of what we call the psychosocial aspects of aging, to understand what a 60, 65 year old and above, what they're thinking in context to, to fitness, okay? They're not training to look buffed, you know, they're not training to climb mountains. They want their health. They've been scared a little bit. They've got some chronic diseases. Okay, so I know that's in there, but understand the psychology, <clears throat> the sociology of an elder adult population. It's a challenge for a young person in this field to put themselves in the shoes of somebody older. I mean, that's just the reality of it. You know, I probably was the same way in back in the mid 70s when I started with the YMCA. I probably thought the same thing, you know. So I know it's, it's something you can't get around. So, so I think if we can do more education in here is the psyche of that person, that what, you know. So I've done, I've spoken at conferences about this and I've talked to young trainers, don't kill us. Don't kill us. We want our health. We want we want functional health, not performance health. And I and I and I try and uh, talk about the difference between the two. So um, so those are things I can see. But I I still see. I mean, I get on a rant, rampage occasionally on LinkedIn. Why do you keep showing a young buffed? female that doesn't have an ounce of body fat on there talking about you know sign up for a certification to work with older adults it 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 it, it, it yeah if it's that kind of person they're going to scare they're going to scare the hell out of a boomer woman that's had three or four kids and and has never really been comfortable with working out see so it's it's who's doing it and the right person See, and so that's what I'd like to see more changes with. So, but you, you might identify with this. I had a, um, I had a chronic shoulder injury that I, uh, I neglected to, to get looked at thinking it was just going to heal and go away. Um, and so 12 months later, almost to the day I finally went in to see my orthopedic surgeon and, and he sent me, he said, it, it's, it's none of these things. I'm going to send you for physio. And I'd been to this place for physio before. Um, only this time I actually went for uh, two or three times every week for a number of weeks. And it struck me as I was there, certainly a lot of older adults in there, but how, how much more appropriate a lot of the work that they were doing exercise wise was more around developing and promoting functional wellness than what I think of if I were to go walk into a typical gym. Oh, no see question. People doing things where there's this natural, well, if I'm not running as fast, you know, the person beside me on the treadmill is running and I'm only walking. Mm -hmm. um, like all these things that play in our heads, right? That, that make us feel inadequate at, at any age that we're at. I, I could be in the gym, you know, having done a marathon the week before, but I got some, some guy next to me who's, you know, who's going three miles an hour faster on the treadmill. Right. And I'm thinking, well, I guess what I do doesn't really matter. <laughs> and that, that plays out over the course of life. It's, it's it does, right? yeah. that, that's how the human psyche works. And I'm sure yeah. it, it only gets more exaggerated uh, probably with time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, yeah, that's, you're exactly right. It's, it's that comparison and, and that, and that sort of thing. Another thing I wanted to hit on is um, uh, which is going to be interesting is the use of technology has a disassociative technique in gyms and fitness centers. So I'll give you a, a, a good example. When I was at Timber Hill, um, so I would make my rounds. Now, even though I wasn't doing fitness, I would get the cardiac rehab people uh, and work with them. But um, I would come in, I knew a lot of people in the area, so I'd come in and wanna visit with them. But there were so many TVs both up in in hooked up in the in the on the beams and in there, TVs and in, in the ellipticals and and the treadmills, 
um, people had their earbuds on listening to music or, you know, um, that it was very hard to have a conversation with somebody because they were so distracted. Now, on a positive note, in fact, I just, I commented last night on a LinkedIn, um, and, and I'm connected with some health psychology people there. So disassociative techniques have actually saved the fitness center experience, you know, because when I started uh, in, in, in 1980 at Timber Hill, I mean, we had bad stuff, but we're going to ask somebody to ride a bike for 30 minutes and just sit there and enjoy it, you know. So reading, you know, having TV, having is a positive thing. You're, you're, you're exercising while you're doing something else. Okay. But for social engagement and being connected with people, it's not good. In fact, we've had some people at Fitness Over 50 leave to go to Timber Hill. They came back to Fitness Over 50. And I said, blank. I said, why did you come back? Because nobody talks to each other there. See? So now, so at our place, so I've actually asked some of the members. In fact, everybody was working out in their fitness center, and I, and I yelled out, how many people want TVs in here? Everybody said, no, no. And so when I'm there visiting, I can, I can, now I don't bother people when they're doing their weight, weight training workout, but when they're on the elliptical or new step or bike or something like that, we'll have good visits. And there's a lot of people talking to each other, doing their aerobic work. So that's in place right now. But I see when I see the people who are in their fifties, and younger, as we go through the timeline, what's it going to look like in the future? Because you've had a you've had a huge generation of, you know, tail end boomers, Gen Xers, who are used to having technology in a fitness center. What's that going to look like? And this is something I talk with Jason about in in the future because he's always asking me, should I get a few TVs? Should I get you know? Should I? No, not yet. Not yet. You may have to eventually but not, not in the near future. Yeah. It, um, yeah, I think of, as you're talking about there, um, like a runner, for example, when they're out doing a long run on their own, will enjoy that time typically to, you know, it's, it's meditation. Um, in one, one sense, it's a time to work stuff out that, you know, could be work, could be family and you kind of, you, you need that time but it's somehow, um, yeah, in a, in a gym, I've 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 done a few different. I'm I've always been more about outdoors. I've got to have a really good gym. I probably my my best gym experience was I had a phenomenal gym when I lived in Calgary. It was a quarter mile from my door. Okay. T two okay. Olympic sized pools, an indoor track. It had equipment. Uh, yeah, yeah. All you have over. To there. You but have that's to. not that, that's not normal. That's about yeah. that's about as good as you find anywhere in the world yeah 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 it yeah it, it clearly you know trends do change and well and this industry has changed as well right so um, yeah, yeah 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 i mean that's big apps you know we've got you know now now because we have in our community corvallis being a college town we've got a lot of educated people so they're they're more they're comfortable with technology they use apps they you know in their life and things like that so we'll have people i mean there'll be people come in they have an ipad and they'll be they'll be looking at they'll be reading uh something like that you know they use technology but overall right right now it's more you know personal social engagement talking to each other um Right. And when we talk about the, the five pillars of longevity like, and how inter we were just before we started here, we were talking about it is how how interconnected things are. And so there you've raised a, a great example of exercise and community are two very separate pillars that look like they would have very little in common. But in reality, put them together and both are suddenly far more important and they right. both are, are, you know, but both support one another. Yeah. You'll like this. Um, so we're working on um, we're working on a new social health membership. The idea that that people would come to Fitness Over Fifty 
and get engaged with some various social activities, book clubs, knitting clubs, things like that, music, playing music, with the idea they may not even exercise. All because we know social isolation is a huge health issue. You know, heart disease rates, things like, you know, it, 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 uh, it impacts our biology. So here, what's interesting for me, and I tell members this, and, and some of the members that were with me back in 1980 when I opened Timber Hill, the old me, if I saw somebody talking, so they're by a weight machine or something and they're talking with somebody else and visiting, the old me from a long time ago would I I I'd go nuts. I go, what are you what are you doing? You're here to work out. You know, you're we're here to stomp out heart disease. Come on, get get going. And as I've matured and learned in 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 the field I'm in, it's like, you know, this is fun. This is delightful. I'm not gonna get hung up if people aren't doing a, a perfect workout and that sort of thing. Although it is kind of interesting, we talk about this as a staff, is do people do enough uh, dosage of exercise so we can, it's truly a health protectant? Or do we have to include the social part as part of the whole, you know, the whole experience, that dosage, to make them healthier? Yeah, it... Um... Well, it, clearly, if you can get both going, that's that's really the magic, right? And I guess to, to your point, uh, maybe earlier, is whichever one leads doesn't matter, right? right? If it, right. if it pulls the other one along, it's going to be right. a win. Yeah. So, so you mentioned something there, not not to go go too deep into the uh, physiology piece, but in terms of so guidance that we would look for for exercise for 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 maintenance of basic health and um, kind of slowing or at least or or preventing chronic disease in terms of what would you generally give as a guideline to somebody say on a weekly basis you should be doing this much and you want to express it as mets or minutes or however but uh, maybe just to give us give us a ballpark well the new uh the new acsm guidelines came out and i think it's around 150 minutes a week of physical activity um and that so that includes general causality activities like um walking to the store gardening uh not just linear you know where you got to get your heart rate up for you know that side of it and that's always been a conflict You've had the, the exercise science people, and then you've had the public health people always in conflict of what works better. And I, and I, I go more by um, the public health, uh, CDC, NA, NIH data. It, it's it's cause, all causes, all causality in that minutes or calories per week. So I, I still, um, in fact, I got a, uh, I'm connected on LinkedIn with the Cooper Clinic and they posted a, um, the landmark study done by Dr. Stephen Blair, the uh, exercise epidemiologist that Ken, Dr. Cooper finally got wise and hired somebody like him and it was a looking initially at a 12, 15 year study of men and women and how much exercise constitutes as a health protectant, not performance, not running or biking events, health. And he had the 2000 calorie a week um, of everything uh, for health. And I use that today and I've had, I mean to tell you when I was doing talks, at the work sites as recent as four or five years ago, I would get, I would have arguments with, with runners. I didn't want to argue, but they want to No, you need to do this. And I said, and I had a handout that showed no 2000 is the limit. Anything more have fun. And I, I recall this one time I walked over to this guy. I said, look, I said, I run marathons. I enjoy it, but I know the health protective value ended 
on Monday for me. <laughs> you know, so, so I was trying to make that point. Um, now, what I've done, what I've had an intern do is take the current ACSM guideline of 150 minutes, kind of quantify it a little bit into the calories, and it works out about the same. The data hasn't changed. The health protective value in physical activity has kind of a statue of limitation of, of what, it, what it does. It's, 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 fa it's fascinating, it's fascinating. Yeah, and there's been, uh, I think, a number of studies now that have looked at um, the amount of exercise and how that uh, correlates to longevity projections. Yes. Um, and having, having come, I guess, me more from the endurance sports side of it with marathons and Ironmans and things, that was one of the things that I was certainly paying attention to. And I used it as a great excuse <laughs> to, to, uh, to stop doing Ironmans because... Oh yeah. Well, it was it was evident to me then of uh, the wear and tear in your body, and you definitely are going to run your immune system down, which is going to make you vulnerable. Um, not to say that it was worse than doing nothing. I wouldn't suggest that at all. But um, yeah, there's there's certainly a peak to kind of shoot for and be somewhere in that window. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and the frequency, right, is important in terms of this isn't a the weekend warrior thing and go do it all on Saturday morning to get all cut up so you can take the next six days off. Um, because, well, what's fun, uh, what's fun for me with it is like, okay, so you can go into um, the, the um, I don't want to say cult, but cohort of, you know, marathons, long bike rides, Ironman triathlons. Okay, so, so what I do when I talk about this is um, in health versus performance, I tell people, now, if you're interested in hearing more about this side of the performance side, uh, let's meet one-on-one, -on -one or I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to come back and do a, another talk from that, because it's more, it's more gets into health psychology, health and sports psychology, than health. So there's so many facets around just being healthy, and, you know, and I tell people the running life, which I still have, has been a good life. The people I've met, the training, uh, the races I've done across the country, the marathons, um, that sort of thing. I mean, it's been wonderful, but I can't, I can't put that in a classification of, well, that's health. I was doing it for my health. It was totally something, something else. Right, right. Well, maybe another day we can talk about, because I've always had an interest in, in the pro athlete um, post-retirement or the elite athlete post-retirement, you know, Olympics or whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Th they get a, a look into retirement much earlier than the rest of us. Yeah. And yeah. they have to deal with the performance issues uh, right, a couple right. of decades ahead of the rest of us. And so the ones who have um, you know, many struggle and, and some, some really excel. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So certainly things yeah. to be learned from them. Yeah. So for the uh, for for people who really are struggling to to get started, so they've you know they've either you know we all did things back in school, of course, uh, and and like like to imagine they were bigger than they than they possibly were. Um, what's what do you find is the hardest part for people to and obviously getting started? What one is just showing up, right, and then showing up with that routine. Um, what, what do you see as the magic if you can if you can describe what's the magic the formula that you see work the best well if i'm doing all right so so <clears throat> if i'm doing a talk which i have a talk on this or i'm working one-on-one -on -one with someone so it's what i call um the enjoyment of the exercise experience so if i'm doing a talk i say well let's take a look at the motivated people and why they do what they do, okay? And, and it's very simple. The motivated people are, who are doing this, they enjoy that experience. They're internally motivated. They enjoy it. So from running to taking a group exercise class to whatever they do, they enjoy they enjoy that actual experience they're they're now this is where in health psychology has really matured 
Um, and it happened while we were out at HP. So I had a, an opportunity to help uh, employees who were struggling get in this type, type of direction. And that is, um, um, like I said, the motivated people enjoyed that experience. They're not doing it for health. See, they're not, they're not externally driven by a doctor saying, Scott, you know, your, your blood pressure's up, you got this, you need, to, you need to start exercising, okay? The motivated people already started and they're getting the health benefits and they're not even thinking about it. The weight's down, they're, they're you know, um, and they're happy about doing it. They're not even talking about that. So that's where I start with people is let's find something that you enjoy doing first. Now, uh, when I did, now when I was at HP, I could really be objective because I wasn't working. I was working for Timber Hill. We had the contract, but I wasn't promoting any club or gym or anything like that. But even when I did these kind of talks working for Timber Hill today at Fitness Over 50, I can be objective and say, you don't have to join Fitness Over 50 if a gym doesn't work for you. So I want to take the burden off people right away and go, oh, okay, I thought he was going to promote how great it is to you know, be in there. Because I know hearing the other side, hearing stories from people where they've been scared I got a ton of stories from HP. In fact, I'll share a story that I, that I tell often. So when, when we were out there, um, they, they made a mistake. They built a fitness center. <laughs> In 1994, I wrote a thesis on why they should not build an on-site fitness center because because they don't work. And I had help from the health psychology people at Oregon State. In fact, Brad Cardinal, a mentor to me, he actually worked in a corporate fitness site in a, in a, in a car factory in Michigan. And he knew what I was talking about. It's the usual suspects that use it. So the people that really need it, they don't use it. All right, so I did this thesis and Timber Hill was less than two miles from the site. There was, a, there was a downtown fitness center that was about a mile from the site. The people that lived in Lynn County, they had their facilities. You don't really need, you don't need an on-site facility. Well, they didn't listen to me <laughs> and they built a fitness center. So they, they, they put us in there. So I had a colleague she had an office, I had an office, they had fitness equipment, the whole thing, and it's like, oh Lord. So I, would, so I was building the trust of these brainiac men, particularly engineers that were, had patents, were, had PhDs. They would say, Mike, do I have to go in? No, you don't have to come in here and meet with you, because I know they were scared. They were scared of seeing a young female engineer or you know, uh, employee that looked good, working out, going on the elliptical, having, you know, just going like crazy. They were, that, they were fearful. I knew that, I knew that they were not confident. Just like I wasn't confident to be in a meeting with a bunch of these nerd engineers. I wasn't confident. I felt like an imposter, okay? So, I sat down one day and I, and I, and I, you know, I'm computer. We, we had a distribution list of over by that time, 6,000 employees. And I wrote this, I wrote this uh, <clears throat> story. God, I wish I would have kept it. I thought I put it on a thumb drive and brought it with me, but I, I, I screwed up. It was called the PE coach from hell. I believe where it's really hurt us as boomers, most, people that weren't athletic had a bad experience with PE. I'm a coach. I'm a football coach. I would have been the PE coach from hell. I didn't want to, I didn't want to teach PE and roll the balls out. I wanted to work with the athletes. So I wrote this article and it's my high school in San Jose, California. And I'm talking about the coaches and things like that. And, 
you know, you maggot and, you know, and, and dress, you know, get in your, you had your PE clothes on. If you didn't have them, you get graded down. And I wrote this narrative and described everything, the cement floors, the cold floors, the cold showers, the whole thing. Proofed it, the whole thing. Sent it out. Within minutes, within minutes, it's like, don't you, guys, don't you people have anything else to do? <laughs> people would chime in, both men and women. Mike, that's my story. And one, 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 one guy said tears are welling up. You know, went just thinking about that. And I knew I touched a nerve. Conversely, the runners, the athletes in there go, oh, I had a ball coach so-and-so at my high school. See, San Jose, I grew up in what, what we now know is Silicon Valley. So all those HP, a lot of those HP people were down there. They came up and they came up to Oregon. See, they were nerds. They were the math and science experts. They weren't, they didn't care for PE. So that will stay with me forever. So I knew, I knew when they built the fitness center, it was the people that were already comfortable working out. They still belong to Timber Hill. They still belong to Corvallis Fitness Center. Some would tell me, um, I would go, why, why, did you, why did you come here? Well, I get a, a quick noontime workshop, I mean, uh, um, workout here, but after work, I get my real workout at Timber Hill. It's like, ugh, that's not how it's supposed to work. So it's the usual suspects in the, in the rich get richer. So we know that. And so I start out with, let's find something that you enjoy doing. Let's, let's start out that way and keep, and, and, and keep it simple. Now, in a talk... I will avail myself to people at free. I'll give you two or three visits, free visits to get you on the right path, okay? If, you know, if, if, it's, if I'm doing one-on-one, -on -one, which I did a lot at HP, it's, it's we're in this together. I'm going to be coaching you. So I'm a certified health coach. And it's, it's tough. It's tough. You have millions of people in this country who are not confident in being healthy. They're, they they just they're scared half to death, and so it's so somebody has to have empathetical listening, hold their hand. You, you take one two steps forward, two steps back, and you can't be judgmental. You can't get pissed off, you know. So that's a big part of it. So there's no simple answer. It's hard work. This has been a fun career. This is a fun thing, but it's tough work. This is tough work, and and um, because you know, like in in some of your sessions, my sessions that I do live, we're getting the usual suspects. You know, we're getting we're getting the other people. I'm not going to go hear that guy. This is too scary. You know, so it's t it's tough work. So we have to. I call it working in the trenches. It's it's a it's a term I've actually used from Patrick, working in the trenches. You know, it, it, that's where the good work is. So that's a long answer to your question, but I hope that makes sense. Uh, I think it, um, it touched on a lot of areas that we, we, we can all identify with, uh, probably. Um, and as you were talking about it, I was thinking of, the, um, of my approach um, and realizing, well, I know what works for me, but I also know my wife, we had this conversation out uh, running together yesterday. Um, that we're not normal. Yes. Right. So, um, cause, cause we enjoy the process of exercise. Yes. We don't need, I, I love having a goal of something that that'll push me even harder, but, um, but I enjoy the process of, cause I get the reward just, you know, it, it takes me longer to warm up in an exercise now, uh, you know, used, used to, like I'd go running and it would used to be a half an hour. Well, now it's like an hour until I finally start to feel like my body's let go of all the baggage. Oh, I know. Uh, I... Well, and of course, I don't have a lot left at that point, but that's okay. At least I, it's like you get up over the, the, the mountain, you get to enjoy the view. So, so let me say this. Let me yeah. say this. So I, we, I use, so <clears throat> as I've matured in my years in this, I've started using me as an example in this question that you answered so so I yesterday I ran uh, 100 minutes okay 
And um, now, if 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 I were doing a talk, um, well, I'm doing a Zoom talk to our members on Wednesday. But if I were doing a a live talk and talk about talking about this topic, I would use my myself as an example. I'm not training for anything. I'm not training for a race. You know, I enjoy. I would go back to. I enjoy that actual experience. I enjoy the, 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 the actual experience of doing it, not any benefits that come out of it. The, the thinking, you know, the being meditation, everything you talked about, I would bring that up. And that would, the, the message I would try and impart to people is like, this is what we need to find for you. Something that's internal that you enjoy doing and you don't need a t-shirt, you don't need a, a medal, you don't need this, you just enjoy doing it for the, the, the enjoyment of doing it. Yeah, and if, it, it, if you get away from all the other stuff, you get away from all, a lot of the dis, deterrence anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And I didn't really find my thing until I was in my 40s. Okay. Yeah, I, I spent 20 years of kind of floundering around and doing okay. doing anything but quality exercise was uh so um what yeah, was so I, it what, i was what? a late bloomer myself i didn't come through any college pro program so i kind of figure if i can do it then what i was able to do in my 40s um certainly uh, was it my, was it the running that clicked um i got uh i got exposed to uh, ironman triathlon um, and it just happened to be i lived reasonably close to lake placid at the time so there were people around and, and I, you know, I got invited to come out for a, a bike ride and I didn't know what a 60 mile bike ride was like with, it seemed like headwinds every direction. Um, but um, but it, you know, for me, it's probably the bike because that was what I identified as a child. I was on my bike everywhere. I was really uh, independent. Okay. Okay. And so it took me back to childhood freedom that I could identify with and I was pretty comfortable on a bike. Um, and, and the running, I, I, so you, when you're talking about PE running for me was, uh, in middle school, um, it was, it was a bear trying to run. I remember one day I finally, finally found a stride and we were supposed to be doing our long run. Well, I decided to do the short run, which was maybe a two mile run, um, and come back and leave, leave the rest of the class and, you know, you're going to get in trouble. Well, I had a time that was way faster, probably almost half the time of what I typically had because I'd finally experienced, oh, this is running. Like, yeah. But it yeah. took some time to, to make it happen. And it was, yeah. uh, it, it, was, it was a lot of years until I found that again. But yeah. it's a, yeah, if you can kind of get into it enough to find that experience that, uh, that, that you know, you and I understand what that is. The problem or the challenge, I guess, for people is you're not likely to find that on day one or week one no. or month one, no. but you will find it if you <clears throat> just kind of enjoy the process enough and you'll have moments of, um, of just pure joy that say nothing, nothing compares to it and you can't understand it until you've been there. Exactly. And, and, and in systems thinking, here's the problem. Here's the problem. And this is why, whether it's a certification or an academic degree, um, I, I, I wish that in the training of the fitness people, they would get the, 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 some, some training and understanding it's a process and there is no failure. You have to find something. The way we do it today is gyms, big athletic clubs like the one in Calgary, Timber Hill, the, you know, nationally, globally. It's if you're not ready to go and you get a program, okay, um, th they just forget you. See, the way in systems thinking, well, it's not our, it's not our fault. That, that person didn't show up for the next appointment. Or even what happened um, at Timber Hill, trying to use personal training as a revenue stream, okay? See, to me, I don't like that. 
So when I go, when I look at URSA, which I presented on, presented at, you know, so some expert will talk about, well, how to get your revenue stream increased through uh, personal training, okay? Well, what a lot of places, what the experts will say is, make sure you get, if somebody signs up for 10 sessions, get that money up front, because they may not show up. There's nothing talked about motivation, health psychology, this person's scared, you know, nothing. It's, it's all about a business model. And that, that, just, ugh, that just drives me nuts. And no wonder we're in the mess we're in. And I've had some really interesting LinkedIn, you know, kind of edgy conversations with people in that side of the field about that. It's, it's, these are people. This is not just a business. These are people you're talking about. And until, unless we change, we're going we're gonna to keep having the usual suspects. And it's only going to get worse. So, right. Um, so, kind of along those lines, but also when you when you talked about the uh, the HP geeks, um, I was thinking about again my own experience was I'm very metrics driven. So, so I want to have a plan that I'm going to execute to, and then I'm going to want to measure how how did I do week by week. Um, is that important for people? Is that generally drive the right behavior or is it um or is it just kind of overwhelm them in, in your experience for, for people who again we're talking about getting started and 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 really get you rolling into the routine that's a good one all right so i look at i go into adult learning adult education and the area of trait self who am i and how do i want to do health okay so I have a good buddy we ran with. Um, he's a math and science guy. He had to uh, draw, he had a log. He's had a log since we started. Well, he, I didn't really want to get him. I got him started. He started running for health or working out aerobically for health. And then like a lot of people, it evolves into, I go from health into running races. So he started running, we, we ran some mar a lot, bunch of marathons together. He trained, he had a, a train for Boston, he had PRs, the whole thing, but he quantified everything, he had a log. It went from a hard copy log into um, online and he, sh he was showing me all this. Now he's got a Garmin watch, the best Garmin watch, he'll take all this data, <laughs> track it. Here's what I asked him. It was several years ago, yeah, when we started, I think it was 14, the last time we did the Eugene Marathon together, I think, and we did the training, and he's, and I know who he was. I know that was him. He was kind of a nerd. I said, <clears throat> blank, do you enjoy the whole process of logging everything as well as the running? Or how does it work? And he goes, no, I got to do, do it this way. So what I learned, and then from others, and asking the same kind of question, it's, it's all of it. This is who I am. This is how I have to do it. I don't, I'm totally different. I'll go by minutes. I don't have to know my pace, you know, especially when I was training for marathons. I don't, you know, I'm just enjoying doing this. Say, I don't have to quantify it. I don't have to log it. I don't have to write down. So you have linear and nonlinear approaches to doing health. So I guess it really comes back to, uh, and, I, and I talk about this with my students as well, is, is understanding who you are. Exactly. Right? And so if that's yeah. motivational for you and it's helpful, then design around that. And if it's not, and I, 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 went, I went both extremes. The, the, so triathlon is, is, is well supported by engineers and accountants because you're doing you so many you things. Money. You got the money, you can afford it. Well, that, that's part of it too, I guess. But, um, but there's so many sports you have to be organized and disciplined to be able to do it all. And, and I used to do the log thing and, and I, I still go back and look at my, uh, I was 
for medical reasons, I was comparing a a run from ten years ago because that was the bent that was the power of having data. It just so happened I had a a run that was a, a twelve mile run was in point one miles of of each other, and I had my heart rate and I had my pace. If I didn't have that data, it would all be very subjective. Um, it ended up being very powerful from a from a from a health standpoint to know how does my health compare. Um, I'm not suggesting for a minute, even even though the, the the metrics lined up very well, to say that I would go erase anything like what I did then. But at least right. I knew health wise, uh, as because if you're running and or exercising for health, my health today is is still pretty good relative to ten years ago. Um, you know, the gray hair isn't necessarily because all the muscles have suddenly started to atrophy and and I can barely stand up. Well, I'm at a stand up desk, so that's that's my uh, I don't sit down many hours in the day. So. Oh, okay. I got to get up. I got to get up occasionally, but yeah, that, I mean, that's interesting. Every, I mean, it, it's so, it's been, I had to learn all this in, you know, from exercise personality to trait self to learn all this because uh, there were, there were some years that, um, and in, in the roaring nineties, you know, there would be three or four of us go train for marathons. And then we'd actually go to the marathon event. And I had to learn about all these personalities. And, and there were both linear and nonlinear approaches. Now, the, the, so a lot of the linear people ended up um, today in both running and cycling, they're on Strava. And somebody's invited me to be on there. And I got on there and I looked at some of this thing and said, like, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. That's, that's for you guys. That's for you guys. So, so, and then there's other apps and, you know, social fitness or not social, it's not social, but fitness type groups where you can compare data and be competitive that way. Well, I, I'm not interested. I think that's part of that next generation of technology coming yeah. through that yeah. that's part of their network. Yeah. yeah. I went from what I said back then from 10 years ago, I called it uh, after running naked. I ran with n no watch even because oh, wow. I was just so overlaid loaded with data yeah. that it was hard to do it halfway. So I learned to run with nothing and that was good. Um, and yeah. that was the benefit. And I'd say I'll, I'll kind of close with one last short story was, um, Remember, you know, if it's all too much around goal or oriented, um, I went to do Boston and my memories of Boston were the hour and a half or however long before we got dropped off trying to with a foil blanket around just shivering and thinking, yeah, yeah, this, this was the, mo the least enjoyable experience of, of all my training. Right. And this is what That's it right. was about. Um, right. Yeah. And yeah. thanks very much. But this is not what this is not fun for me. Right, right. There were elements during the run of, you know, of <clears throat> Boston's a special event, no question. It is, it is. But, um, but yeah, once you realize you find something you like to do and you, you, you have some natural ability, right, your biomechanics kind of lend towards one thing or another, um, or it'll take you to the next activity, which is, which is okay too. But uh, yeah, it's a, I, I think, you know, as we kind of circle back here and close it up, the message is really about you may not know what your activity is until you try, right? So, right. so the best thing to do is to show up and try and show up again. The expectation is you're going to fail several times. Exactly. Yes. But you're going to learn more from, you know, the research side would say you'll learn more from the failure than you will for the, from the success. Absolutely. Yeah. And so Absolutely. don't go with an expectation of success. Go with an expectation of failure or at least learning and, right. um, and plan to try a bunch of stuff and then say, okay, I've got enough data now that directionally I probably think I might like, you know, I might like the classroom setting. I might like the, you know, the solo. I might like the, well, and, and hopefully you get, I guess, a, a mix of, of things and it's not just one activity anyway, right? You have to make sure that's part of what you coach people all the time. One, one thing that's really interesting that we've learned, um, and I've talked with a number of colleagues nationally, regionally about this, and so it, 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 validates, it validates what I'm thinking. If not for group exercise, the group exercise experience, um, 
most health clubs would be in trouble. They most mo, that, that that offer group X are are surviving. Now, the the um, then you look at from an economic thing. So you have the uh, magical thirty nine ninety nine a month national chains. You have now Planet Fitness taking over the world. You know, ten bucks a month. Um, but the large uh, health clubs, uh, athletic clubs like Timber Hill, um, you know, the ones in our network in the Northwest, it's been Group X that, that saved them. There are people paying fees, you know, $50, $60 a month to take two or three exercise classes a week. That's all they're doing. They're not using the fitness center. They're not, they're, they're barely using the locker room. They're not using the pools. In fact, if anything, now in the, um, uh, it's called the boutique studio type effect. There are a lot of, um, it's here in Corvallis. It's where you are. It's, you know, you go to a bar three place to just take bar three. That's happened in yoga for a while, but you go to a boot camp. There are three boot camp studios here in Corvallis. So it's, and then you pay as you go. So people have figured out, it's probably taken them a while, but people have figured out this is what works for me. Where the old model originally, when we opened Timber Hill, we had a, there's a small pool in there, which is now warm water uh, for the arthritic classes. So they do swim lessons, the whole thing. It was probably about 20 feet, okay? And I said to one of the guys that helped open, open the club up, I said, I said um, why a pool like that? Because when we consulted with other people in the field, they said, even if people don't swim, they'll join anyway. So it's the added value of having a whole bunch of stuff. That doesn't work today. And I think, fortunately, the people that have found something and failed they figured out this is what works for me the group exercise experience is it's very social it's i get a workout and i'm very social now everybody talks about accountability well i my class is at 10 a.m i got to be there yeah that's a factor but you have to enjoy if you don't enjoy that i don't care what time it starts you know, if I'm going to run with you and you say, Mike, we're going to, we're going to go out at nine o'clock. Okay. If I don't like it, I'm going to find an excuse. Scott, I just, I don't feel well. See, so you have to still enjoy the whole experience. It's, that's critical in this. Yeah. And I think the, the one change I would say as an observer is the older we get, probably the more the community piece becomes important. Huge. Right? Huge. Yes. Right? So, yeah. so, yeah. so, which is why the trying to do it in the home gym thing um, probably only gets harder um, as you get older and, and you really need to be getting out. You, you need that community engagement because those people are going to pull you into other things that have nothing to do with, with what you went to the, uh, whatever the activity was. You're going to go into theater or out to dinner or you know, all these other uh, benefits as soon as you start to uh, build out your community. And it takes, conscious effort right to invest in your community and in, in all these different ways yeah. and it'll pay you back in ways that, to, that you never imagined yeah 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 well mike this has been great i've been say i've been waiting to have this conversation with you for a long time because there in, in your you would know this in your profession there aren't many people who have been around um and really seen it all and and observed over a lot of years so you are a uh you're a rare man doing, I think, really high value work, and and I I certainly admire your continued uh, your continued learning and your continued sharing. Uh, I think in a, in a really important area. Well, I, I appreciate that. It's it's been really neat for me because, other than about eight years in Texas, um, and and beginning with the Y in California, where I'm from. Uh, most of my career has been serving this community. So it's, it's, it's been neat to see like at Fitness Over 50, people I got started running 
because we were in the first running boom uh, when we opened the club in, in 80. Um, people from HP. Um, I mean, it's, it's been neat to see that. We've all been on this journey together. And uh, in January, I did a talk. It just, just had a ball at the public library. And there were people I knew back from 80, 81, people I knew from HP. I mean, just a whole bunch of people I already knew. And it was just a blast. You know, and just, I, I said, I've just been an honored to be a part of everybody's lives here. And it's, so I'm fortunate in that way. I haven't had to travel, you know, in the field. I, you know, in the field of health promotion, I've seen uh, my, fr my friends with the YMCA or in uh, worksite health promotion, they have had to move all over the country, you know, just to have a job. I've been able to have a foundation where I could make a difference, you know, because if you're moving around in this field, it's tough. Or if you're going, you know, 14 years at HP, after usually in worksite health promotion, after three to five years, you're on borrowed time. Because these contracts, it's like you're out of here, you know. So I've been really fortunate to have the time to, to lay a foundation, to learn, to help people. And um, so I think that's what motivates me to keep getting better as I'm in the uh, third stage of my career, the final stage of my career. Well, excellent. Hopefully we've provided some good information for, uh, for viewers here and I'll put, uh, put your contact information down. I'll post it down the bottom. Right. If people uh, want to reach out to you for a talk or, uh, pleasure, or anything yeah. at all. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Scott. Yep. Get a good workout in. Or, you know, you I, already have. I already did it. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't face seeing you if I hadn't already done it. <laughs> I know. I, I don't want to be the PE coach of hell. <laughs> I didn't want that holding over me. It'd be, I'd just see the shadows of, come on, Scott, you gotta go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. Very All good. Right. Very good. Okay. Okay. Take care. Always nice to have people who know what they're talking about and have done it before. <laughs> <laughs> that helps yeah, that yeah helps. for sure for sure okay thanks mike have a great day